Here I've got a nice number puzzle type problem that comes from a South African math contest from the year 1997. So our goal is to find the smallest positive integer so that when the last digit is moved to the first, the result is 2 7th the original. Now before we start tackling this problem, I'd like to get a handle on what this action is. So what I mean by that is this action of moving the last digit to the first. And so I've made a little picture of that going down here, or I guess I should say a couple of examples. So we've got the number 123, so the last digit is 3. If we move that to the first position, now our number is 312. So if we've got the number 7425, we take the last digit, which is a 5, and move it to the beginning, and we've got 5742. So I think maybe just illustrating it with these very simple examples gives us an idea of what's going on here. So what we want is that the result here is two-sevenths what we started with. Okay, so let's get into it. So I'm going to start by writing the original number down via its like expansion with digits. And I'll use this standard like overline notation for it. So the original number will be D1, D2, dot, 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 all the way up to Dn. So D1 is the first digit, D2 is the second digit, and Dn is the nth digit. So putting this bar over it is just a standard way of saying that those are forming the digits for a number. Just so that we're all on the same page, D1 through Dn come from the set 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. Except for D1, it is not allowed to be 0. That wouldn't be that interesting. Okay, so now I'd like to express this where I've pulled the last digit out because that's what our action does is it pulls the last digit out and it puts it in the first position. So in order to do that, I can take this and write it as 10 times D1, D2, all the way up to Dn minus 1. So that number right there plus Dn. So something like that. But then maybe since this D1, D2 up to Dn minus 1 is like grouped together into one thing, we'll name that something. And we will name that x just to make it easy. So this is equal to 10 times x plus, and I'll call Dn y, just to make it kind of in line with our labeling of x here. And I guess I should point out that x now comes from the set between 0, I guess it can't be equal to 0 because that wouldn't be that interesting, up to 10 to the n minus 1. So that would be like a string of 9 n's. Okay, so that's good. Now let's see what our transformed number looks like. And so we'll kind of play the same game on this. So what have we done? We've taken the last digit and moved it to the first position. So this now looks like dn, d1, d2, all the way up to dn minus 1. But now expanding it similarly, I see that I have 10 to the n times dn and then plus D1, D2, all the way up to Dn minus 1. So something like that. Okay, but let's notice that this Dn was what we called Y. So this is 10 to the N times Y. And then this guy right here is exactly what we called X. So let's notice that we've got X is between 0 and this 10 to the N minus 1. And we can get also a bound on Y. So let's notice that y is between 0 and 9. So now that we've got this expression, we can get the 2 sevenths into the scenario and set up an equation involving x and y. And the interesting thing that's going on here is we will first figure out the form of this exponent n. Okay, great. So what do we want? We want 2 sevenths times the original, so that'll be 2 over 7 times 10x plus y must be equal to the new one. So that's 10 to the n times y plus x. So let's note that that's the same thing as 20x plus 2y equals 7 times 10 to the n y plus 7x. 
just by like clearing denominators and then distributing through. So next up, notice the X stuff looks a little bit simpler to work with because it's attached to a number 20 and a number seven instead of a number 10 to the n times seven. So what we'll do is solve for x in terms of y. Well, we're gonna have 13x is equal to, let's see, seven times 10 to the n minus two times y. But now let's notice this left-hand side is a multiple of 13, meaning this right-hand side must also be a multiple of 13. Since y comes between 0 and 9, and 13 is prime, that tells us that this stuff right here, the 7 times 10 to the n minus 2, must be a multiple of 13. Or 7 times 10 to the n must be congruent to 2 modulo 13. Well, that's equivalent to saying that this difference is divisible by 13. Okay, now let's solve for this 10 to the n. And let's do that by noticing that if we take 7 times 2, we get 14, but 14 is 1 mod 13. So that means we can multiply both sides of this by 2, and that'll clear this 7 here. So we'll have 10 to the n is congruent to 4 mod 13. But actually, 10 is a little bit trickier to deal with than we would like. But let's note that 10 is the same thing as negative 3 mod 13. So that sets up this exponential equation. Negative 3 to the n is congruent to 4 modulo 13. Okay, so that's starting to look good. And now we're going to make a chart of values of negative 3 to the n and values of n just to get an idea for what the possible values of n are. So let's see, we've got n and then we'll have negative 3 to the n mod 13. So we'll reduce mod 13 at every step. So let's see, we'll take n 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now technically we don't know how far we should go. We know that we might have to go as far as the 12th power by Fermat's little theorem. But if you notice, we'll only really have to go to the 6th, and that's because negative 3 is not a primitive root mod 13, but that's kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, let's make this calculation. Negative 3 to the 0 is 1. Negative 3 to the 1 is negative 3, but I'll rewrite that as 10 just because it's nicer. Negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 cubed, well, that'll be the same thing as negative 3 times 9. But that's going to be negative 27. But negative 27 is the same thing as negative 1 because it's 1 less than 26, which is a multiple of 13. But negative 1 is the same thing as 12. So we get 12 there. And then negative 3 to the 4th will be the same thing as negative 3 times negative 3 cubed. So that'll be negative 36. But negative 36 is 3. That's because 36 is 3 less than 39, which is a multiple of 3. Now I'm multiplying negative 3 to 3, we get negative 9. But negative 9 is the same thing as 4 mod 13. And then multiplying negative 3 to 4, we get negative 12. But that is 1 mod 13. So that completes a loop. So we want to zero in on this right here. Notice if we raise this to the fifth power, we get four, but that's exactly what we want over here. But that doesn't necessarily tell us that n is equal to five. It tells us that n is of the form 6m plus five. Why is it 6m plus 5? Because if we go around every six loops, we get back to 1. So all of those will achieve a 4 when plugged into this equation right here. That being said, since we're looking for the smallest number, it probably stands to reason that we should probably try the m equals 0 case first. In other words, the case when n is equal to 5. Okay, and that's exactly what we'll do to finish this off. So on the last board, we wrote our number. So the number that satisfies this sentence right here could be written of the form 10x plus y, where 10 was between something like 0 and 10 to the n minus 1, and y was between 0 and 9. 
I guess I should say that at this point, we see that y must at least be equal to one, otherwise x will be equal to zero, and the whole thing will be equal to zero, and we're looking for a positive integer here. Furthermore, we were able to write 13x as seven times 10 to the n minus two times y, and we argued that n was of the form 6m plus 5, and we should probably try the case when n is equal to 5, because we want to achieve this smallest condition over here. Furthermore, we should probably try the case when y is equal to 1, again, because we're trying to satisfy this smallest condition over here. So we'll have 7 times 10 to the 5 minus 2 times 1, so that means we can essentially disregard the y. So that'll give us something like 6, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8. So that's the number that we're going for right here. And we know that this number is divisible by 13 by our construction. So that means our number x will be that number divided by 13. So I'll spare you the details of working that out. But what you get is 5, 3, 8, 4, 6. So that's our number x. And then since we have y is equal to 1, we can easily calculate our number. So that means our number is 5, 3, 8, 4, 6, 1. And then just to check that this all works, let's multiply this thing by 2 over 7. So if we take this and multiply it by 2 over 7, so 5, 3, 8, 4, 6, 1, well, Checking all the details, what you'll get is 1, 5, 3, 8, 4, 6. But that's exactly the action that's described over here. Notice that this last digit is moved up to the first position. And that's a good place to stop.